Hi, I'm Dr. Doug Ritchie, and today we're going to talk about posting custom functional foot orthoses. A common option on your prescription form is the addition of either a forefoot post or a rear foot post or both. And I'd like to talk to you about the advantages and even the pitfalls of ordering posting on custom foot orthoses. We're going to start by evaluating a foot orthosis that has no post, no rear foot post, no forefoot post. Contrary to popular belief, this orthosis, even though it has no post, is quite stable on the ground or inside the shoe. This occurs because the front edge of the orthosis is flat and in total contact with the supportive surface so that when the foot loads the orthosis, there's no rocking motion. If we take an orthosis and apply only a rear foot post, typically that's posted in about four degrees of varus, like this post, it will actually impart a rocking motion because adding a varus rear foot post will tilt the orthosis four degrees varus off of the front anterior edge. So that now there's going to be a rocking motion as the patient progresses from the heel to the forefoot. Why do we apply a rear foot post? The rear foot post is thought to help control and guide frontal plane motion during the contact phase of gait to control that initial pronation during contact phase and limit it to somewhere between two to four degrees, depending on what the prescription says. The rear foot post will also stiffen the orthotic, particularly along the medial arch, which can be desirable for improvement of pronation control. The forefoot post is an excellent way to correct the orthosis in varus or valgus. Adding a forefoot post will automatically tilt the entire orthosis inverted or everted depending on the prescription. There's no worry about rocking of the device, particularly if there's no rear foot post applied, because the alignment of the orthosis is totally dictated by this contact area at the anterior margin. So adding a forefoot post can tilt the orthotic into varus or into valgus and there's no rocking motion. The disadvantage, if there is one, for adding forefoot posting is that you are increasing the pressure of the orthosis against the foot distally where the post is you're lifting the orthotic up off the ground into the patient's foot. And there's a limit where the thickness of this post will begin to cause too much pressure on the patient's foot. Now that can be solved if it happens by simply grinding some of the thickness off the forefoot post, just grinding right here, which lowers it closer to the ground and lowers the pressure point here. So that's a nice advantage of being able to adjust a forefoot post in the office. Another form of posting is the extended sulcus wedge. This is a extended, usually a crepe material or softer material that's embedded on the bottom of the orthosis. And instead of ending at the anterior margin, as we see here, the wedge effect is carried out to the sulcus. Now the advantage of this extended forefoot post, also known as a sulcus wedge, is that it carries the correction distally in the foot so that we get control of the patient's foot during the propulsive phase of gait. 
So in this case, this varus extended forefoot post will continue to control pronation in the forefoot during the toe-off phase of gait. The only disadvantage to this type of posting is that it requires a full-length top cover with extension and that increases the bulk of the orthosis compared to the standard orthosis with a forefoot post. These types of extended sulcus wedge posting are used most frequently for athletic activities and therefore this type of device will work fine because it's used in an athletic shoe. But if there's a concern about shoe fit, it's better to start off with a standard forefoot post that will not require the extension and padding.